Are you looking to build a sales team? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how to build a sales team step by step, starting with the setter, the closer and the team leader. Let's jump right into it. So let's talk about how to build a sales team. And also I'm going to talk about in this video about the three key roles when it comes to building a sales team. But first of all, I'm going to show you my sales process. This is a typical sales process that many, many organizations use. So first of all, there's the marketing side. The marketing size has to do with the content. We do create content on YouTube, on other social platforms. We leverage SEO and people find us and eventually they uh, will book a call with us, a 15 minute intro call. So we use uh, either organic content, ads or referrals to drive people to our website or to our Calendly link where they're going to book a short 15 minute discovery call in order to make sure each and every person that we talk is a fit and, of, and especially the people that was, will join for the program or will join for the software that we are offering or whatever the case might be, it's super important to qualify first and, and make sure people are a right fit for you, for what you are offering because you will be able to get them results and those results will eventually pay off because they will uh, refer you to more people and it will uh, create a, a flywheel effect that will help your business grow exponentially. After that, we have the demo calls. That our demo calls usually are between 45 minutes and one hour. Here is the part where we present the prospect with what's uh, what's our mechanism with the case studies and how do how we work and eventually in case they want, we are going to make them an offer and invite them to work with us. And after that, there is the fulfillment part where we work together and uh, focus on getting them results. Okay, in order to do this, it's super important or it's rather easy or intuitive to do it as as uh, the, the owner, the founder, because you just start with the business, you have an offer and you want to make money. And usually you might go through such a process. But once your business start, start to grow, it's important to build a sales team and to have things in place because the quality of the processes within your business would eventually lead to the quality of the business. So you need to have clear defined processes and instructions and, and, and clear elements that each and every uh, member of your team has to go through. So when it comes to structuring a sales team, here are the, the three main roles I would suggest you build. This is the roles that I hire for my team, for my company, and it works like wonders. So first of all, we have a setter. After that, we have a closer and eventually we have a team leader. So each and every one of this person has a couple of responsibilities. The setter is responsible with booking calls and depending on the industry, depending on, on, on your audience size, depending on, on the deal flow, it ha will have a number of uh, of X book calls per month. This is why I wrote it like this over here. In in my particular case might be, okay, the setter, I want to book 30 new calls each and every month. In your case might be five calls, 10 calls, depending on, on the business side, depending on the market, depends on many, many, uh, many elements. Uh, for example, I have a, a company that does B2C services and also a company that does B2B services. On the B2C services, we go around the 25 to 40 booked calls. On the B2C, we go around the 5 to 15 calls. So this would be uh, the amount we are we are aiming for as part of the responsibilities for the setter also when somebody sign signs up on a funnel views of usl their responsibility would be to call that person within 15 minutes and schedule a call after that it would, would be another responsibility would be to dm people from the community we have a free community on school also we do have instagram pages youtube pages and so on so uh, another uh, responsibility for the setter was would be to dm new people that uh, join the community or sign up uh, for a newsletter or uh, maybe uh, uh, follow us on social media and uh, D, uh, DM then and validate first of all validate their interests see what they want to do and eventually schedule a call with us also another responsibility is to hold intro calls is to to uh, to uh, book the calls and eventually uh, get to know the person and see if the prospect is a fit is a fit for what we are currently offering if the per prospect has en enough time to invest has the energy has the interest and the money in order to invest in our programs or in, in our transformational programs that will eventually get them the results that they want and, and want to know if they're a fit for for this 
uh, the keyword here is qualified. We don't necessarily look for big, big numbers and for a high amount of people to go through and, and book them into demos. We look for the right people to join our demo calls and eventually the setter will give the, the will transition the prospect from himself to uh, his next teammate, which is the closer. So the closer job is to turn X amount of prospects into customers at Y AVB or average order basket. So for example, uh, if your goal is to make uh, $50,000 this month, you might have a $10,000 offer. You want the closer to close five prospects at maybe 100% cash collected at uh, a, a 10k offer you know so this would this metrics would add up and eventually and this is something that you want to do it's irrelevant if the if the prospect closes five five people at one thousand dollars cash collected that would be a 5k it wouldn't it wouldn't be a match with what you're what you are looking for to achieve in your business and uh, it might not be the the, the uh, your target audience and your target market to to reach so this is why it's important to, for the for the uh, for the closer to not only uh, help, uh, hold the demo calls and uh, and talk with the qualified prospects and help them decide on the offer but also to talk to the right people and make the right offer so in this particular case uh, another responsibility would be okay uh, the conversion rate might be like 35 percent 40 percent 60 percent depending on, on the on the on the closer skill depending on its experience depending on the offer on its conviction on many many things and also one one important aspect would be the average or the basket and also i would add here the cash collected amount because all of these elements are important and will eventually help you earn more money and also attract the right people uh, within your business and uh, and work with them in order to provide them uh, with the best results after that what their closers do also they don't they are not just closing and leaving the customer uh, at 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 hand and it's it's important to transition to make us a, a transition and uh, our, our closers do conduct onboarding sequences so for example after a person has paid the closer will uh, will uh, continue to stay like 10 15 20 minutes and explain the next steps showcase and and make sure that the customer has everything that need that they need they know the exact step-by-step -step process they have to take until they were start seeing results and this is super important you know especially if you want to lower your refund rates because refunds might be a pain in the ass sorry for the language but this is this is something uh, something that we as as business owners want to want to avoid having refunds so this is uh, having a good and solid onboarding process especially immediately after one has uh, one has uh, purchased it's super important in order for uh, your company to have lower refunds uh, and happier customers moving forward the third person or the third element in in uh, our sales team structure would be the team leader i would suggest once you have two or three uh, uh, people in your sales team to hire a team leader or to to uh, uh, help uh, one of the one of the uh, team members to level them uh, level uh, to help them level up and also make sure that in this particular case uh, it's not your best uh, your best uh, uh, closer do not make the mistake of uh, turning your best sales sales mem uh, sales team person or salesperson into a uh, a team leader because it's it's <laughs> something that you should you should avoid at least in my opinion i've made this mistake in the past as many people have did uh, sales skills and leadership skills are not the same they are two different and separate parts so what i would strongly suggest you look for someone that has good sales skills but exceptional people skills exceptional leadership skills and uh, and uh, and bring that per that person onto your team or uh, or advance them in, into the role of the sales of the of the sales team leader so what does the sales team leader does it assures that uh, the team uh, manages to attain a certain level of performance and the team has a certain level of well-being money is super important uh, but it's also important to have uh, people that are happy at their work that they are satisfied with their job because this will help you earn money on the long term not just uh, within one uh, one month or, or one quarter but 
for years to come. So this is why it's important to make sure that uh, your your team uh, does perform and they feel great at work and uh, there's this element of well-being, they feel respected, they are being well paid and, and they are they have a, a clear path of, uh, of growth. So as far as for the responsibility, first of all is to conduct sales calls and I would invite the team leader to also do intro calls, demo calls in order for him to uh, to sign new clients and more importantly to have a hands-on approach and perfect the system. You have a system in place, a process that we spoke before and it's super important for this process to be on, on an ongoing uh, perfection and improvement and iteration process. Uh, do on a monthly or quarter to quarterly basis improve your marketing, then your intro calls, your demo calls, your presentation, your case studies your offer, so on and so forth. So the team leader has to have a hands-on approach in order to see what works, what doesn't work, and also to feel it, and also to hear it from the from uh, his peers, and then make the, the adjustment within the process. The second responsibility would be to review and uh, and provide on a weekly basis feedback for the setters and for the for the closers so review the calls the setters and the and the closers should at least 50% of the calls uh, uh, record them and then hand it to the team leader for a review and for the team leader to to make sure that uh, the closer and the setter improves their efficiency, usually the conversion rate, and also improves the client satisfaction ratings. If you don't do this, you could also integrate, for example, with Calendly after a call has ended to create a, a simple uh, Google Forms uh, uh, doc and, and put the link in the, in the Calendly uh, email after the, the call has been uh, held and ask a couple of, uh, of uh, words of feedback. Okay, how did the agent did? How uh, from a scale of one to 10, how would you rate them? And so on and so forth. So this is a, a quick way to see how each of your reps are doing. And then you can hand it to your team leader in order to for him to, to put things in place and make sure uh, each and every rep has also high performance in terms of numbers and also has high client satisfaction scores. And nonetheless, uh, another responsibility would be to track the results, track the results on a daily and monthly basis and also to held monthly rituals in order to help the overall team experience and growth. So it's super important to see the daily results and the weekly results, eventually the monthly and quarterly results for each and every of your team members, and then use the monthly rituals, the monthly or the quarterly performance reviews and uh, speak with each individual individual team member in order to improve their overall experience and in order to help the team grow. So this would be the three main uh, roles and uh, responsibilities, uh, also three responsibilities for each of these uh, these roles for you to have in your company. Uh, moving uh, moving on, how to hire? So how to hire a salesperson? First of all, I would suggest you start with a setter. So if you are currently doing the intros, the demos, you are doing the bookings, you are doing everything in your business, or at least in the sales part, start first with a setter. You can post a a, a job on LinkedIn, on Indeed. Maybe uh, you can send it to your email list. Uh, you can uh, use social media, and you can you can post a. Uh, um, um, a, a job offering out there in order to attract a setter. You can either go on the path that you hire a person with experience or a person without experience. You, you might choose whichever way you would like. So after you start the onboarding process within the 7, 14 uh, day period, after that, it's it's uh, I would suggest you gradually uh, you gradually delegate call bookings and, and intro calls to the setter. So first, maybe handle the setter to, to do the DMs or to do the, uh, the intro call. So whichever part of the sales process you would like to delegate. So after like one month or one month and a half, two months, the setter to take over the majority of the call booking or the intro calls from your side. After that, after one or three months since the setter started to, to work on booking calls and knows the process and understands how to qualify, you can then, if you would like, transition them to a holding demo call. So basically the setter turning into a closer. You have to speak with, with the person and make sure that the person wants to do this and also uh, if they want to transition and if they, their skills match the closer's uh, 
responsibilities and the, uh, the closers approach. So within, let's say, three months of starting to work with you, they might be able to, to uh, take a, a good part of the demo calls. And after that, by month four, uh, the setter should be able to take and close uh, prospects in the demo calls at at least 30 to 40 percent conversion rates. Uh, for example, if you are the owner, you might be able to close at 50, 60 percent because you have more experience, you have uh, more skin in the game, you have a lot more uh, elements that are being involved. So in their particular case, that might be 30 to 40 percent uh, conversion rate, at least at the beginning. Uh, one thing to, to notice, I would suggest you not uh, not rush the process. You, uh, you should take your time with it. So uh, there's a saying that once you hire a person, it might take up to six months until that person becomes productive and starts generating profits to your business. So this is something that uh, that it's 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 common practice in the industry and, and we should just accept it and, and let it be. Also, do keep in mind that the overall numbers will be lower. So once you start start to hire people, you will see that your conversion rates will drop. Your number of clients might might be affected. This is this is a normal behavior, so it's okay. This is why uh, I would strongly suggest you take your time and you delegate it slowly. And also, once you manage to to delegate the sales part, you also make sure that you increase the volume on the other side, on the marketing side, and you manage to book more calls because you will need eventually more volume for your business. Now, all you have to do is to repeat this process by hiring a new setter and grow your sales team up to the desired level. If you want two people, three people, then you want a team leader, you want to hire a team leader, you want to uh, to uh, to make the transition from one of your, your current members to becoming a team leader, that's up to you. So in case you are curious about how to hire, I've uh, recently added a, a YouTube uh, video on, on uh, on the channel about uh, LinkedIn hiring strategies uh, and scripts. This is my exact approach on how, how I hire people, how I hire uh, salespersons, how I hire uh, people for the marketing side, for the product side. You can check it out uh, on this video. And also, if you need help with the implementation and if you'd like uh, more help on how to do it hands on and how to put this entire system in your business, you can book, you can book uh, here a call with me and we can chat more about uh, about uh, what you're currently doing, what you want to do, and eventually how we can help you get to where you want to be. Also, uh, do make sure to check the description because over there you're gonna have access to this document and, and use it for your own as maybe a, a, a process or a SOP in order to help you grow your business. So thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to this channel because I'm going to upload more videos on the topic of managing sales team, how to build commissions uh, for your sales team, also how to manage them and how to improve your overall business with the power of a team. Subscribe and also do check the other videos. Thanks for watching. Talk to you next time.